Hi, this is Bruce, and welcome to my tutorial on the TFDI Boeing 717-200. It's a, a progression from cold and dark start to taxi ready condition. Uh, this is a video that I make for myself, uh, under 25 minutes in length, I hope, that is just a great quick refresher course so that when I hop into the aircraft after many months of being away from it, I can just watch this and get reacquainted and uh, refamiliarized with even some of the subtleties that aren't intuitive and the flow of things so that I can get started and fly and enjoy the flight sim that I've enjoyed for so long. And I hope that in sharing this, others too can benefit. And also, if you have any insight or information, please let me know. Type that in in the comments section. Now, this is a 134-passenger aircraft, 8,000 pounds of baggage or cargo, ceiling 37,000. Cruise is about 450 at flight level 340, for example. Uh, max Mach speed is... Uh, 0.77 when it's maxed out and a range is 1430 miles. I'm using P3D version 4.2, chase plane, active sky, ultimate traffic live, 100% general and commercial and P3D's traffic at the same levels. Windows 10, i5 is overclocked, SSD, SSD drive and NVIDIA GTX 1070 for those that are curious. Um, I'm just going to go ahead now and pop into the pilot and command position. This is the cold and dark start. Here's your tablet on the left. Left click anywhere within its main portion. You don't need to turn the batteries on. This has its own effect. There are two boxes that are primary of importance. Uh, the red one gives us these options and then this will be entered later on in the FMC when we get there. Click the X in the corner to go back to the base. Green exterior, these are good. Ground power unit, ground air unit, and then might as well put out the cones and the wheel chocks. If you want to activate your doors, just click on one of those and those doors or uh, cargo hatches will open up. And then if you click on them again, obviously they'll close. If you want to turn the whole thing off, just left click the frame. And if you want to get rid of the whole thing, left click the frame again. Where did it go? Down here in this holder. That's the edge of it right here. Left click on that, up it comes. And again, we can just set it back down there if we want to. Here's the yoke. If you click at the top of the yoke, it goes away. If you click at the bottom of the yoke, it comes back. Uh, click one, both are affected by that. So just to be aware. The parking brake is as big as life right here. Uh, one of the clearest I've ever seen. The left click on that, knob pops up. Parking brake is now set. Rolling around now to the overhead, the panel here. We want to go ahead and first turn our battery on in the electrical section. It's this gray knob with the vertical little line. It turns horizontal when it's on and all the lights come on. You can see we have external power available. So we'll left click on the external power knob. You can hear the power coming up. In this same section, there are two other things. Uh, emergency power to arm with a right click and gallery turn on. Up here with these yellow lights, those are our IRS alignments. We want to click on the right click, both of them to nav. It takes a while for those to um, fire up, just like a computer takes the time to boot up. So get those started early. Turn on your left pack, right pack. We're just descending gently down through here now. Your isolation valve should be already on auto. If it isn't, put it on auto. We'll just skate past the fuel section down here to the emergency light. We'll want to arm it with the left click. Also now, turn your smoking with a right click to auto and your seat belts to auto. Uh, that's my choice. And then um, nav here, left click, turn it on, and we'll come back to the beacon in just a little bit. Um, the rest of this now, in case we need to wait a second, is set to go and we're in a good spot. I might also add right now, because it can fog up pretty quick, uh, windshield anti-fog and anti-ice is very helpful. Now let's say at some point you want to turn the uh, APU on, which we could have done anyway without the externals being on. But at this point, if we chose to turn on the APU, here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn off the left pack, and we're going to turn off the right packs. Then we're going to turn on the aft right pump. We're going to turn on the start pump over here under the engine section. Then up here where the APU block of uh, switches is, are, we're going to turn on the master to run, and then hold it at start with the left click, and then let go. If you want to see if you've been successful, check down here. It looks like it's already booted up, which is great. This little window here in this rectangle is going to show us in a second the figure starting to develop. RPMs, there it is. Exhaust gas temp. So we know that it's up and running, but if we wanted to hear it, we can go outside and listen for the whine. And as you can hear, 
There it is. What we're waiting for is this box right here to turn with a blue on, and then you'll click the APU2 on. So we'll wait for this now, and it should happen fairly quickly. There it is, left click. Now we got APU supplying our power, and we can turn the externals off. We can turn our packs back on so everybody can deal with the outside climate, and the air here is now turned on as well. And while we're up here, we'll go ahead and turn on the hydraulic trans and aux. What that does is the trans is a mechanical transfer of pressures um, from an operating source to an unpressurized one. So if we lost hydraulics on one side or the other, this will transfer it to keep things uh, pressurized. And then the aux button provides backup pressure to the right hydraulic system. And it also pressurizes the hydraulic system when we're on the ground. So it's, sometimes it's just nice to know what these things do instead of going through all the motions rapidly. At this point, we can go back down to the pilot and command position, look over on our tablet, which we'll call up again from down below here in the bucket, left click that, left click the center, look at the exterior green again. We have now have no longer use for our ground power unit or our ground air unit, and since we're here, we can go ahead and pull off the cones and the wheel chocks as well. Uh, again, we'll need that back eventually, but I'll turn it off for right now. Moving down to the pedestal between the pilot and the co-pilot, here with the squat code currently uh, VFR at 1200, we'll be changing that before takeoff. This is the button you need to right click on two times to go to Alt On, and I think I'll just zoom it up a little bit so you can see there, Alt On, that's what we were aiming at. Two clicks to the right does it. So that's what's needing there, nothing else down below at this point. Working with the FMC, this is a great position and view to do it from because you want to click in the black area there where the screen is to pull it up in a pop-up. And you're going to need this on in the red box to show these three figures because we're going to need them eventually. So first of all, click the top left soft key, then the bottom right soft key. Now we're going to start entering some information. We are at KCMH right now. And as you can see by the symbol symbology here, there's a backslash between where I'm at and where I'm going. So we'll put that backslash in there. And then I'm going to Pittsburgh, K-P-I-T, short, hop. Click the top right soft key. Click the bottom right soft key. There it is. And then we have a couple other three features we want to add. But right now, it's telling us we need to align our IRS. And that's right here. And so click the soft key to the right of that. And the alert is gone. Now we can enter these three figures. So flight number, enter any one you want. I'm just going to do my classic. And then the flight level is at 17,000. So I'm going to enter the first three, 170. There are no step climbs available in this uh, uh, simulator. So don't bother with the rest of these figures. The cost index is between 5 and 35. Generally, I'm going to put 35 in there because I'm not paying for gas. That's page one of three. Hit the arrow page button, now we're on page two, and this is where these figures over here are needed for this place over here. So before we go any further, I'm just gonna double check my weights. I'm pulling up my design add-on manager. I'm sorry you can't see that on your screens, but I'm maxing out the passengers to 134, cargo 4,000 front and 4,000 rear. Dropping the fuel down to around 5,000 pounds in the left and 5,000 pounds, 100 in the right. And then I'm going to send payload to sim, send fuel to sim. They don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to look at these figures. I just wanted to make sure they were accurate. Uh, center of gravity is now 18.4. There are five open spaces and three figures. We are not going to fill out the top or the bottom. It's the middle three figures. CG, center of gravity, ZFW, zero fuel weight, TGW, gross weight. Those are the three we're going to enter. So starting with the first, 18.4. Click on the CG, and then the next is 116.9, and that's our gross weight, GW, and the last is 106.7, that's our zero fuel weight. So that's all done. Get rid of that little indicator, and we're back now, and there's a page three, but if you were to look at it, it's there's nothing there that you need to do right now. Then you're going to go to uh, the A2 and approach. And this is our takeoff, or other in approach. I don't know why I said two. 
Um, I don't usually enter anything in the flex figures. There are charts and things for this and instructions if you want to do it, but I typically don't. Uh, 13 is our standard for flaps. And then for slope and the wind direction, you could put all that in there. There are directions on how to do that, but I just put 0 backslash 0 because it doesn't really make a tremendous amount of difference. 26 degrees centigrade. So I'll put that in the outside air temperature. If it's Fahrenheit, just put 26 with an F in there. Uh, and now when that's done, it says check, confirm, vertical speeds, so, or V speeds. So V1, I like it 134, good. And then VR is 139, and V2 is 146. And so we're set in that regard. And when we've done that, automatically over here in the uh, PFD portion, I guess I can't move it too easily from this point of view, um, the figures are right up here, and when the speed tape rolls with the acceleration on takeoff, I'll come to these speeds, and that's just a good uh, visual indicator of when I want to be rotating and climbing, all that kind of good stuff, and also what I'm going to set my speed at initially. So those figures are important, um, and then down here is your flight plan. This flight plan discontinuity is what you should expect at first. Here's where we're going to enter our SIDs and our STARS. I know there is no SID for KCMH already, but if I were to click on it and then clicked on the SID, now it definitely tells me there are none, but I am taking off on 28 right based on weather conditions. Insert, click the soft key to the left of that. There we go. Pittsburgh, I know, has a standard terminal arrival route. And you can see some other options for other issues, but click on the one to the right of STAR. I know ahead of time it's FUGA 4. I know that the transition is CTW VOR, and I'm landing on the ILS for 28 right. Then I'm going to go ahead and it says insert yes. Now it wants to know my transition for that final approach. I'm going to choose nasty. Uh, it sounds funny, I know, but that's what it's calling for. And now I've got this flight plan discontinuity with all the other features entered. To get rid of something like this, press the CLR button, there it is, and click on the soft key next to it and presto it's gone. These arrow keys, up arrow will move the uh, pages up in the direction of the arrow which then reveals what's below and right here I want to show another thing. We're going to go from Sydney to Nasty via vectors which then gives us a discontinuity we cannot get rid of. Unless we delete the vectors with the clear key and then we have to delete the discontinuity after that then we go directly from Sydney to Nasty, and we don't want to do that because the uh, star says that we continue on an editing of 101 after Sydney until we're giving our, given our vectors for our final approach. So we'll leave that as it is. Um, anytime there's a vector associated with the next waypoint, you'll get this. And again, it's the vector that prevents this from going away, and that's how it should be. So we don't want to mess with that. If you want to get back to the top of the page, just click the flight plan button again and it jumps. Now if you wanted to enter some other waypoints between your starting point and the first point, say for instance on the star or between the SID and the star, this is how you can do it. Just type in one, for example, I know that APE is close by. And if I click on the waypoint I want it ahead of, not after, but ahead of, click it. And you'll notice that APE now is ahead of CTW. There's my flight plan discontinuity. I can get rid of that because there's no vectors associated with it. Now, this is the new lineup uh, program. But let's say now I want to get rid of APE. Well, that's easy. CLR, left to the APE, it's gone. But now I got that discontinuity. We'll get rid of it with the clear button. Oh, I had to get rid of my message first. Now I can hit clear. Good little lesson there. Here we go. Now, looking at the star, I know that Whiskey is supposed to be at 10,000 feet, not at 17, which is carrying on down through here. So I'm going to pick a speed, 250 backslash 10,000, which is what this star calls for. Go across to the soft key, press that. Now whiskey is set the way I want it to be in the larger uh, numerals there. And you can see that it's adjusted. So as it descends, it's going to be at 10,580 by air. And then when it finally gets to whiskey, it's where it should be. And then if we were to look through it now, it's all lined out. It's going to descend slowly through each waypoint. There's our vector. Nasty then is our approach and on down. And then there's 28 right. So that all lines up really, really well. Um, pro um, progress here is just informational. 
you can you can refer to that if you wish the rest of it is very self-explanatory I just leave it on flight plan if you want to go direct to something hit the DIR intercept and then click on the waypoint you want to go to like let's say I want to go directly to air and bypass CTW okay great. click on air see it just went into here if I click this it will go directly to that and skip this one if that's the case I want to have I don't want that to happen so I'm just going to go back to flight plan uh, no harm no foul on that if I did want to check on the uh, screen here let's just pull it up and I want to see if it's got the continuity in the route I want I just click the plan button and then use the arrows to click through and here you can see the top of climb at 17,000 prior to the VOR TW and then you see that little broken arm there with the arrow that tells me that the top of my descent is going to follow right there at the base of that so let's just continue on through there comes air and on we go down through the list one spot after another clear through to here and you can't see it very right very well right so I'm going to decrease that's through this setting here increase decrease under range and now I can keep clicking through and we'll come to that discontinuity at Sydney and now you can see why the, I'm going to be way out here and then ATC is going to turn me into nasty that way so we'll leave that open so again that's a good thing not to be worried about for flying though leave it on map and that's that's the best thing you can do at least in my opinion so we'll leave that on the flight plan put it back where it belongs now we're ready for our pushback just one thing if we wanted to start up an engine you know we could go ahead and turn on our beacon indicating that yes we're going to go ahead and fire something up um, otherwise we can just go ahead and get pushed back there are two ways to do that in this uh, model and that is either you can put shift P which is just the traditional straight back or if you got GSX and you know how to use it you can use that as a service so I'm just going to go ahead and temporarily push back I'm going to pause this and we'll catch up at the other end of this pushback okay I've pushed back using ZSX and I'm going to go ahead now and start the engines I could have started them on the pushback but obviously for this I want to make sure that we follow the, the procedures so we don't forget what they are first thing we're going to do is turn off the left pack turn off the right pack we're going to have the isolation valve now right clicked up to open. The fuel pumps, all appropriate ones, will be turned on since I don't have any fuel in the middle tanks. I'm just going to open up the rights and the lefts and the fronts and the backs. The um, right engine now can be started by right clicking on this red knob. It brightens right up. You can swing down and watch. And what we're looking at here is the N2. The N2 is the core of the engine usually used as an indicator for startup. It's a percentage of the maximum rotation available. When it hits 20, fuel on. And then we'll watch the N1 and the other gas temps come up. Uh, the N1 is actually the uh, percentage of the max rotation that's tied to the thrust that the engine will produce. So the interior is going to be moving, and then the big blades will start moving, and the thrust uh, components will start spooling up. There it comes now the and one's showing some movement. You'll hear a click in a minute. That's telling us telling us that the uh, engine number two is in good shape. Let me just back this up a little bit. Okay there it goes. Now we're gonna right click on the left engine. I'm gonna look back down here again. There goes into. And when it gets to 20, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the fuel switch. There it goes. Left click on that, fuel on. And it should proceed just like the other one did now. We'll wait just a minute for this to catch up with us. There goes the temps. And then the N1 will soon start to show some movement. bit of a delay. I'm going to go ahead and put pause on for a second just to speed things up for you.
Okay, that just takes a couple of minutes. Um, just keep your eye on things. It's all good. I'm going to go ahead and switch some views around now. Go back up here to the overhead. We're going to go ahead and put our left pack on and our right pack on. Keep our paying passengers happy. Up here, our gens are already on for left and right. We're going to go ahead and take off now the APU. Put it on off. We're going to go ahead. We could take the air off and we could turn off our APU, but typically speaking, it's usually left on. But I'm going to go ahead and just click it to off. That way you see the, the difference that that makes. So right now we're fully on the engines and we are getting closer all the time to take off. We go ahead and put on our nose light for taxi. And also in a minute when we get to the runway, we'll hit the uh, landing lights. Turn on our high intensity logo and ground floodlights. I just do that. I don't know how many other people do, but uh, I just might as well turn them all on. I got them, I might as well use them. We can turn the start pump now to off. Turn the isolation valve back to auto where it once was. And then we're gonna shift down in our views here. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set our flaps at 13, just as we had put into the FMC. If there's any cause for a little alteration between 13 or 14 or 12, um, this is a um, dial a flap here, and you can dial it up or down, and you'll see the differences here. And you can adjust that and fine tune it as you wish. I just use 13, it works great. Put on your speed brake, put the little indicator on the handle, right click, and that little stripe will appear, the red stripe. That means that if you need to stop on the runway and abort your takeoff, the speed brakes will pop up and help you stop. We're going to look up here at the glare shield and look at our headings and things. Over here, you've speed, heading, altitude, vertical speed dial. Um, this little sleeve, the white one, inside the heading is for your bank angles. You can left and right click on it and adjust it. Right now it's preset on auto. Your barometers here, if you were to pull it out with a right click, it sets the barometer to standard. Um, of course, you can adjust it as you like. I just hit B on the keyboard and it went to 299 or 1. When we look at this, all these indicators are in white. That's because it's all manually operated yet at this point. And so, for instance, uh, there's prof, nav, and FMS speed. You can pre-select prof, and you can pre-select nav. And you can see that the nav is armed now. Let's just call it up so we can see it better. Um, and maybe that didn't help. I don't know how I'm going to move that down. I just can't do it. Um, well, I know what I'll do. I'll just zoom in on here. These magenta figures will show up when they're armed. And what happens is, when I hit the autopilot, it'll automatically then shift to the FMC and away from manual control. And so you can do that by hitting auto flight, or you can do it with the Z on your keyboard. And either way, then the magentas take over. On the speed, you can dial it up to say five or 10 over. This is such a rough day with lightning and, and uh, variable sheared winds. I just tried to trial run and I got such a great tailwind when I turned that I about got knocked out of the sky. So if we were to look at this uh, V2 of 146, we maybe want to give it 156 and give ourselves 10 knots latitude, a little bit more safeguard. So I'll do that. If you click over here on the range, you'll see VOR1, VOR2. That allows the pilot to see both. You can increase or decrease the range on your screen. If you want automatic direction finders, it's the same as uh, the VORs. You got traffic data, waypoints, VOR, NDBs, and airports you can add to your screen. Um, you've got the plan. We went through that. Maps, what I've got it on now. You got VOR, TCAS, and approach also right in those sections there. There is weather radar, and it's down here in this section here. You can right click it two clicks, and now it's up on radar. Now there was a little note in there saying that the weather radar, here it is, weather radar was off, now it's on. And you can see we got some uh, interesting weather out there. It's a real fun feature in there, it's telling me weather radar's on. TCAS is still on standby. When we get to the lineup and we're going to take off, we would run our TCAS clear over to TARA. And now you can see that it's TA only. And so that's why it was flashing at us, just so you don't uh, have to wonder where it was. So we'll put that back where it was when we were starting up. Other than that, just a little quick note here to wrap this up. We've got two movements here with these knobs that are really worth noting. When it's in the autopilot, 
and you want to take manual control, or if it's manual control as it is now, prior to uh, turning on the autopilot and the or, or auto flight, when you left click this or the heading or your altitude, speed, altitude, or heading, when you left click it, you're taking control. It'll it'll set it as it is at that moment. So if I'm flying 210 knots and I left click this, it's going to stay at 210 knots, at least as it's set. And the aircraft will seek to maintain that or go there. If I right click it, it'll go to the setting I chose. So left click, maybe it's 210. If I want to speed up to 250, then I dial it up to 250 and I right click it. Heading the same way. If I want control of the heading, I left click it, it immediately snaps to the heading that I'm on. Then if I change the heading, put the mouse wheel, right click it, now the aircraft will turn manually to the heading that I chose. <laughs> He's shaking his head at me, get out of my way. And then the flight level here, same thing, works the same way. If I want to go back into the uh, FMC, then I can just click the appropriate uh, black soft key there, prof, F, FMS, speed, or you know whatever's appropriate, and it'll go back to that and uh, resume. If I want to go off of the autopilot, I just would click these two buttons here. That also disconnects my um, automatic throttle. And again, I can do that as well with the left click and then set to what I want with the right click. Obviously, there's one more window that would be important for takeoff, and that's our trim. And it's warning me right here, stabilizer trim in the white. And so you'll want to get this back into the green zone. This will turn green when it's appropriate. Obviously, my rudder is fine. If you don't see this window, there is a uh, keypad down here with different options. And, oops, went too far. It's right in here. And you can hit different ones like config is right here. And now if you go up, here's the configuration for various things. And they will um, show you movements as you move your, your mouse or your joystick around or your, your rudders. So that's a handy feature as well. Um, we could also change that to engine. We can change it to these other things as well. Hydraulics, electrical, auxiliary, fuel. Fuel's kind of handy, isn't it? Uh, there's consequences, which there are none at the moment. I to display, okay, status, and miscellaneous. I just think fuel's a good spot to leave that one on for now. So we'll put that back. Other than that, I saw online that if you double click over here, uh, it disconnects your auto throttle. I'm not sure that works. I'll have to try it out sometime, but I thought I'd pass it along for anybody else's consideration. Aside from that, I think we're ready to go. Again, if you left click the heading knob, the uh, heading jumps right to the nose of the aircraft. Real handy when you line up on the runway. Have fun. Have a good flight. Enjoy yourself. And I'll see you in the skies, I hope, on VATSIM or something. Thanks for watching. Take care.